For today, I've got a nice geometry problem, and this comes from a Stanford math contest that was given out to high school students around the Western United States in the year 1951. So let's see the setup. So we've got a right triangle with side length A, B, and hypotenuse C, and we know the perimeter is 60, so I've written that as A plus B plus C equals 60. Furthermore, we know that the altitude from this right angle right here, this right angle vertex to the hypotenuse is 12 units. And using this data, we wanna find A, B, and C if A is less than B. There's a symmetric solution if A is bigger than B. I'll let you guys get that one on your own. So first off, I want to notice that we have some angle measures in here that are gonna be pretty helpful. Well, we don't know the exact measures, but some angle congruences that would be helpful. So first of all, if we set this angle measure equal to alpha, and this angle measure up here equal to beta, we see that alpha plus beta plus 90 is 180 degrees by the sum of the angles of a triangle rule. But furthermore, we know this right here is a right angle. So if this is alpha, then this measure here must be beta. Again, because we've got a sub right triangle there. And then furthermore, since this is angle measure beta, this is 90 degrees, that means that this angle measure here has to be alpha. But notice that that tells us that we've got three triangles, our large triangle and our two small triangles that are building up that large triangle, all of which have angle measures alpha, beta, and 90 degrees. But that tells us that these three triangles are similar. But since those three triangles are similar, we know that the ratio of the side lengths, if we pick the appropriate sides, are equal. And in fact, we know that A divided by 12 is the same thing as C divided by B. Just because the roles being played by A and 12 in this small triangle and B and C in the triangle as a whole. We don't need to use the similarity of this second kind of inner triangle, but we also have that. Okay, so let's see what we've got. We've got our first equation, which is A plus B plus C equals 60. That was given by the perimeter fact. We have this fact given by the similarity of those triangles, which we just argued. Notice that this is equivalent to A times B equals 12C. Furthermore, by the Pythagorean theorem, we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So now we've got a system of three equations and three unknowns. So here are our three equations, and our unknowns are a, b, and c. But notice this is a nonlinear system of equations, so maybe there's a little bit of work to do in order to find the solution. Let's see what we can do. So let's take this equation and rewrite it as a plus b equals 60 minus c. But now if we square the left-hand side, we'll have a squared plus b squared, which we know to be c squared. And then we'll have a times b, but look, we know that that can be written in terms of c as well. So here, taking this equation and squaring it, we see that we have a squared plus 2ab plus b squared equals 3600 minus 120c plus c squared. So that's just from multiplying out the left and the right hand side of this equation. But now we can start simplifying. So notice that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, which we can use to cancel this c squared on the other side of the equation. And then furthermore, two times a b is going to be two times 12c or 24. C. So now we've got a nice equation that we can use to solve for C. Notice that we can move the 120 C to the other side of the equation, giving us 144 C equals 3600. But then dividing both sides by 144, we will see that C is equal to 25. So we know the hypotenuse of our triangle already. Now we'll plug this value of C into maybe this equation right here and this equation right here. And we can use that to solve for A and B. So let's get to it. 
So plugged into this equation right here, we see that A times B is equal to 25 times 12. 25 times 12 is 300. And then plugging C equals 25 up here and moving the 25 to the other side of the equation, we see that A times B is equal to 35. But notice that that means that B is equal to 35 minus A. We can take that expression for B in terms of A, plug it up into this equation, and we'll see that we get A times 35 minus A is equal to 300, which is a nice quadratic equation in A. We can multiply it out and we'll see that we get A squared minus 35A plus 300 equals zero. So that's just by moving everything around. So this actually factors quite nicely. This factors as a minus 15 times a minus 20 equals zero. And so that gives us two solutions. That gives us a solution when a is equal to 15, which tells us that b is equal to 20 by this equation right here. And another solution when A is equal to 20, that makes B equal to 15. But notice that doesn't satisfy this rule up here. So in the end, we have one solution. A is 15, B is 20, and C is 25. And that's a good place to stop.